A little while ago, I made a video where I was testing out the Hot Ash Mini Titanium Rocket Stove. And unfortunately, the stove didn't per perform too well in that video. And I say unfortunately because I was really quite excited to see this stove work. I like the concept of the rocket stove. I like the design. I like the small, comp compact fig form of it. And I like the fact that it's titanium. But as I said, it just didn't work out too well. And I'm going to put a link in the, up in the corner to the original video so that you can see uh, that test. I'm not going to talk too much about the original test, but at the end of that video, I had opened it up to my viewers to suggest to me how I might be able to get the stove to perform better. I had a lot of comments and a lot of people pointed out that I was not doing it the right way, and I also reached out to the company. They also pointed out that I needed to do it slightly different. So I am going to do that today. I'm going to take all the advice of the viewers and of the company itself and try again to see if I can't use the Hot Ash Mini Titanium Rocket Stove to bring two cups of water to a boil. Now, if failing that, I have another idea, something I'll share with you as we go along. Stay tuned. All right, setup for this test is similar to what I did in the last test, a different location, but I am set up in a fire pit so I can give it some wind protection. It is icy on the ground and the temperature is very similar to what it was at the last, uh, last video, somewhere around zero degrees Celsius, just uh, around the freezing mark. So what I did last time that was, I was pointed out to me that was incorrect is that I had lit some fire starter, fed it down the chimney and put some small kindling in there. Then when I saw that the fire was going good, I started to feed sticks in through the feed port. It was pointed out to me that the correct way to use this stove is to start and feed everything from the feed port in the burn chamber and wait until you get a good uh, fire established in the burn chamber before you add your pot. So that's what we're going to do today. Just want to make sure we're nice and stable here. Very good. Okay. So what I'm going to use today to get the fire started is fat rope. And this is a product by Hangar 51, the fire specialists. And it's uh, something I've been testing out for a little while now. And it is nothing short of amazing. But it's not about this today. It is about the stove. So I'm just going to tuck a little bit of that down just inside of the lip. And so I can get it lit. And then I'll feed in some very tiny pieces of pine, or not pine, excuse me, uh, spruce, dead spruce. We'll talk about that in a second. And uh, once we get a fire established, looks like it's going pretty good. And then I'll uh, put the water on and we'll start the timer. All right, so to light this, I'm going to go very old school and use my Bic lighter. Hopefully it's not too cold. I've had it in my pocket. Hopefully it's warm enough here. Just make sure. Get that lit with a little piece of the fat rope. There we go. Wasn't quite as warm as it should have been. So you can see the fire starter, this fat rope lights up very quickly, but I do have to wait a few seconds for that to engage before I start pushing any sticks in. I don't want to push the fire starter to the back, so I'll see if I can get a few sticks in there now. I'm going to start with some very small sticks. As you can see, I'm starting to get a bit of a fire started in the burn chamber. And we'll let that go for a minute. I'm going to give you some close-ups to ensure that you can see where the fire is burning. So as that starts to ignite, the reason I'm using spruce is because that's what's available. It's the easiest thing for me to find. I can just break it, the, the dead small branches that have a lot of dryness and snap to them off the trees around here. They're up off the ground. Theoretically, this stove is designed so that you should be able to walk along and pick any organic matter up off of the ground that is dry and use it. And I have had it work with hardwood, but I have not yet had it work with softwood. So that's what we're going to try and do today. If I can get it to work with the softwood, then of course it'll work well with the hardwood. You can see I'm starting to get quite a bit of flame coming out of the chimney. It's looking really good right now. A few more of the bigger sticks and then I'll put the pot on and we'll start the timer. All right, it's starting to look pretty good. Give it another second. A 
get my timer ready. All right. I think we've got a bit of a flame fire established. You can see down inside the burn chamber that the fire is burning directly in the burn chamber where it's supposed to be. I have a lot of flame coming up the chimney, which is what you want. I have two cups of pretty cold water sitting here and we'll put that on and we start the timer and we'll see if and when this comes to a boil. Okay, quick update. It's uh, five and a half minutes since I put the water on to boil. I had to move the stove ever so slightly. Uh, the heat from it was starting to melt the ice underneath and the back legs were starting to sink into the ice so it was starting to become a little precarious. I think it may be happening again so I may have to move it again but I wanted to show you that the fire is burning very well in the fire chamber. I'll be adding a couple more sticks in a moment but uh, so far the stove is working as designed and let me have a look inside. Uh, there's a few bubbles forming on the bottom, which is encouraging, but that's what I had last time, and I still did not end up with a boil. So I'll bring it back if there's any, if, it, if and when it does come to a boil. Okay, folks, it is now, where's my phone at? There it is. Over 25 minutes since I put the pot of water on the stove to boil. You can see that I have a very good fire burning in the in the burn chamber. If I lift the pot off, you'll see that there's lots of flame coming up the chimney. You can also see that there's an awful lot of ash at the bottom of the chimney. Hopefully you can see that anyway, which I think may be starting to clog up airflow. But the proof of this test is did I have water come to a boil? And the answer is no. It's warm, you can see steam rising. There are a few bubbles on the bottom of the pot, but it is nowhere near a rolling boil. Nowhere near, unfortunately. Okay, I suppose if I continue to feed this for a while longer, I may get my water to a boil. But honestly, after 26 minutes now, if I can't bring water to a boil in that time, then this is not an effective, efficient stove. Disappointing, but not surprising. So I do have something else I want to show you. I have to let the stove cool down, and we'll set up for that test, and I'll show you what I've got that I think you'll be surprised and pleased with. All right. Like I mentioned just a moment ago, disappointing, but not surprising. Uh, I've tried this test a number of times before I put it on, on uh, video this time as well, and I've had the same results every time. Very promising, the fire is burning well, lots of flame coming up the chimney, the water heats up, but does come nowhere near a rolling boil. And if it was purified water, that's fine, but for me, I like to use it with water that I find from streams of the lake, and I have to have it come to a boil to make sure it's clean and safe to use. All right, all is not lost. I have an idea. So I was doing some research after the last video about rocket stoves in general. And one of the things that a lot of the research indicates and is in the designs of a lot of other types of rocket stoves is an insulated chimney. What is recognized is that there's a fair distance from the burn chamber up the chimney to where the pot is. And that's an opportunity for a lot of heat to be lost as it's moving up the chimney. Now, that's also what makes it a very clean burn, but you can lose a lot of heat out the chimney. So a lot of the chimneys are insulated. So that got me thinking, what could I do to insulate the chimney of the hot ash mini titanium rocket stove? Carbon felt. I had a piece of carbon felt around the house. This is also known as welding blanket or plumber's blanket. It's made of a carbon material. It resists burning. Well, it doesn't burn at all. It'll glow with the heat, but it does not uh, light up and melt or anything else. And I had a piece of it and I wrapped it around the chimney. And well, let me just show you. Let's set up and do a test with the carbon felt wrapped around the chimney of the hot ash mini titanium rocket stove. All right, exactly the same setup, same location as last time. It is a little bit windier this time, but it shouldn't be windy right where the pot is. If anything, that should work against this test. But uh, let's see where it goes. So again, I have a little bundle of the fat rope all fluffed up and ready to be ignited. I'll put that in the top of the stove. I have one more piece of fat rope that I'll use as a lighting wick. 
And this time my bic has been in my pants pocket, so it should be nice and warm and work. Let's get this lit. And then again, maybe my bic is uh, out of fuel now. Let's have a look. There we go. Time to consider the fact the bic may be out of fuel. Give that a second to light the rest of it. And once again, I'll start feeding in little pieces of pine to start. Or not pine, again, spruce. So that I can get a fire going in the burn chamber. I have to tell you that fat rope is pretty amazing stuff. All right, one more piece. We already have flame coming up the chimney, but that's mostly the fat rope. Not really a fire going yet in here. Will be shortly though. So it just takes a couple seconds to get this going. All right, I believe we have our sticks are starting to go. Very dry spruce. As you can see, all kinds of flame coming up the chimney. All right, I still see the fire coming back into the firebox. So it's working its way back into the firebox. So let's put the pot on. Same two cups of cold water, and I'll start the timer. And I'll bring it back as we have a look, and we'll see what the result of this test is. All right, hopefully you can see this. I'm half in sunshine, half in shade here, but I have, a, again, a good, good fire going in the burn chamber. You can see flames rising up the chimney just nicely. And if we look at the time, 18 and a half minutes, a hard rolling boil. Success. Okay, I'm going to use this hot water to make myself some lunch, and uh, then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, a couple of things I want to mention. So, it, the stove did work much better with the carbon felt than it did without. In fact, it brought water to a boil where without the carbon felt, it didn't bring water to a boil. I will tell you this, I did this test a week ago today. Well, pretty much a week ago today. I got better results with the carbon felt, but then again, it was a little bit warmer and there was not so much wind. But that's not the point. The point is I was comparing with and without carbon felt for this stove. And you can see the insulated chimney makes it or allows it to work much, be much better. In fact, it didn't work without it. Okay, I mentioned that I had done this video a week ago, and the only reason I'm not using the footage from that video is because one of the segments, I forgot to turn the video camera on, or it I, I forgot to pr press record. However, I did save some of the footage, so at the end of this video, there will be an extra piece of footage that comes out of last week's testing that I think you'll enjoy, and I think, well, I'll let you see. It speaks for itself. Okay, so what have I got to say about the Hot Ash Mini Titanium? Final thoughts. Uh, well, okay, in full fairness to the company, I spoke with them and they indicated that they had not done testing in cold weather. So they weren't, uh, I guess it's not a matter of being surprised, they just didn't know what to expect when I tested it at near zero or near freezing temperatures. So it's not that cold, you know, I, I didn't use it all winter when we got down to minus 15 Celsius. This is just around the freezing point, so it's not that cold. Still, they had not tested it and not designed it for that. So what can I say about it? It works well with the carbon felt. It still does not work without the carbon felt. Now, I will again qualify that by saying I have had success using hardwood, but I can't always guarantee that I'm going to find enough hardwood or split enough hardwood out to make this, make this stove work. It has to be able to work with what I can find, which oftentimes is spruce and pine and other softwood branches.
So once again, I cannot recommend the stove as is, as it comes from the company. However, when I did share the results of these tests with the company, they were very interested in how the insulated chimney improved performance dramatically. What that'll mean in terms of modifications to future editions of the stove, I don't know. But it'll be interesting to see. Now, if you own one of these stoves now, and you've had similar bad performance as I've had from this stove, then uh, what have you got to lose? Go out and get a piece of the carbon felt, and wrap it around with a wire like I did, and you may find that you have a performing stove and you've recouped your investment in the stove again. Okay, that's all I have for you today. If you have any comments on how the stove performed with and without the carbon felt or any other suggestions regarding the stove, please leave them in the comments below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now. Oh, and just uh, in case you're interested what I'm having for lunch, super simple, Szechuan flavored ramen noodles and a package of tuna, one of those envelopes of tuna. We don't get a lot of packaged or those envelope type foods here in Canada, but one of the ones we can get is tuna and it makes a wonderful addition to the Szechuan noodles. So they're nice and rehydrated. It's going to take a few minutes for that cool down enough for me to eat it. So I'm going to...